Okay, so first of all, Christianity is about relationship. The second thing you need to know is that Christianity is about commitment. Now, these are things I mentioned yes. last week, but I wanted to get into them. Christianity is a commitment to Christ without concern for cost or consequence. Okay? Without concern for cost or consequence. I'm, one of the things I used to say a lot, maybe I'll, I'm, well, I'm saying it again now. To have the peace of Jesus Christ reign and rule in your heart, you need to understand that the Lord is in control of your life. And to those who know that the Lord is in control, the consequences are always inconsequential. What can man do? That's right. All right? So, there's only one word that I know of that really accurately describes what our commitment to the Lord must in fact be. Total. All. A-L-L. -L. All your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Jesus said, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, the rich young man came to Jesus and Jesus, he said he wants salvation. He wants that eternal thing. And he said, and Jesus says to him, well, one thing you get lack. He says, go sell everything you own, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. So a lot of Christians today think, glad he didn't say that to me. No, he didn't say that to you, but here's what he did say to you. So then, none of you can be my disciple who does not give up all his own possessions. Luke 14, 33. All. All. There's a beautiful old hymn that people don't like to sing, I don't think, anymore. I surrender all. This is a this is a, a this is a faith of total commitment. It's based on total commitment because you would never have the opportunity to have that relationship with the God the Father had it not been for the total commitment of His only begotten Son Jesus Christ, who humbled Himself, gave Himself up, and died even to the death on the cross. That's total commitment. And that's what God, I was going to say, that's what he requires of us. That's what he demands of us. Total, total commitment. Now, that means you have to understand that so many people are being drawn into what is called Christianity by the promise of lovely things. You know, you know, just, just sign the card here and become part of the church and you're going to get healthier, wealthier, skinnier, wiser, richer. Um, there's something you need to know because this is the Word of God. If you are a Christian, if you become a Christian, you need to know what Jesus said. If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and he said, All, there's that word again, indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And then John went on to say in his first letter, Do not be surprised, brethren, if the world hates you. This is not a comfortable religion. We've made Christianity, you know, this fluffy, nice religion with all the prosperity abounding around us, pastors flying around in their private jets, living in wonderful homes, the, 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 the headquarters of the biggest religion, you know, just luxurious as you can possibly make it. The fact of the matter is Jesus Christ, talking about the cost of following him, said to a man who said, you know, he wanted to follow him, he said, consider this. The foxes have dens, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. If you're looking for something comfortable in this world, this is not the place. What you, what you come to is that assurance of eternal life and, and glory with Him. That mansion that awaits us in the sky. There's a logic to this. 
In that same first letter of John, in the fifth chapter, he said, we know this. We, we know that we are of God and that the whole world lies in the power of the evil. Now, bear in mind, that letter was written after the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus Christ. That letter was written after the day of Pentecost. And he wasn't saying, oh, we've taken over the world. He was saying, we know that this present world lies in the power of the evil one. And that evil one, the devil, Jesus said he comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10. I've got a home in glory land that I shine the sun. I've got a home in glory land that I shine the sun. I've got a home in glory land that I shine the sun. Way beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Way beyond the blue.